So, I'm an educator, and one of my jobs is to advise people on what they're going to do with the rest of their life when they leave our school. Which is terrifying when you think about it. I mean, think about that. Somebody comes to you for advice on what they should do with their life. And so you start by asking them, well, you know, what do you like to do when you have nothing to do? A classic advisor question. Which, by the way, if you ask IB students this question, they kind of look at you with this blank stare. It's like, when I have nothing to do? Free time? What are you talking about? It's kind of like asking them, hey, what's your favorite thing about sleep? <laughs> the concept just doesn't quite connect. So if asking people what they like to do doesn't work, then I move on to my next question. What makes you angry? What is it that, when you think about it, you think, man, somebody should do something about that. And again, blank stares of confusion. I often get all sorts of uh, people coming into the, into the advisor's office. And uh, it doesn't matter what angle I take, whether it's what do you like or what makes you angry, I typically end up with some sort of response like, well, Mr. Patton, I played a lot with Legos when I was a kid, so I think I ought to do chemical engineering. And I'm like, everyone played with Legos when they were kids, the greatest toy of all time. It doesn't mean you need to be a chemical engineer. Actually, my favorite one is I have a lot of people who come in and they, they want to be doctors. Now, in most cases, I taught them biology. I've seen them dissect an earthworm. <laughs> they tell me they want to be a surgeon, and all I can think is, God, I hope I don't get sick. <laughs> but I think that people, you know, they want to know what they're going to do with their lives, because I think that they want to, you know, maybe do something that's going to benefit other people or serve them in some way. Oh, who am I kidding? People come to me because they want to talk about how they can make money, and a lot of it. And yet, no one seems to get the irony of coming to a teacher for how to make more money. <laughs> now, genuinely, I really do believe that people want to do something meaningful with their lives. I mean, when I asked myself the what makes you angry question, I thought, it really bothers me when people don't understand the impact that they can have, not only on themselves, but on those around them and on our planet. I mean, that's what led me into a career in education, because I believe that inspiring people to become better versions of themselves and to contribute to a more peaceful planet, well, that's a mission worth living for. So when people come in to ask me what they should do with their lives, I do my best not to be biased, but I already know that the most influential and powerful position you can have in this world is to be a teacher. Now, I'd love to say that this is just my opinion, but actually, everybody already knows this. Because everybody's interested in education, they have a vested interest in it. And not surprisingly, most everybody thinks they already know everything about education. Because, you know, they went through school one time. And dreaded it, by the way. I don't know if you've heard some of the things that people will say when they're in school. It's like, oh, thank God, it's the weekend. Oh, break is coming, yes! Oh, do I really have to go back to school? Summer was so great. And that's just the teachers. <laughs> I think people will think that they're experts on education because they've consumed it at some point in their life. And all of a sudden, that means that they're a self-proclaimed expert and they know what's going on with education. I mean, I've been around since one of the greatest technical advances of all time, the advent and evolution of cellular phones. Now, I've been around to see the very first phone, believe it or not, and I've seen all the advancements and developments that have come from it, and I might be able to offer some anecdotal ideas on how phones could be better. But in all reality, I am in no way placed to be talking about what's gonna make a phone really great. But you talk to anybody about education, and they'll get on your case about how schools are messing up, or they're killing creativity, or tests don't tell you anything about education, so why do we use them? But let's face it. Talking about phones is just nowhere near as inspiring as talking about education. And maybe that's why people get so passionate about it. I mean, after all, it is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world, said Nelson Mandela. And it seems like a lot of other people already know that as well. Because in 2009, the Taliban decided to increase its campaign by attacking some 500 schools in that year alone. They recognized that a big attack on their uh, position was an educated female. And so what they did is they did everything they could to remove that opportunity from them. 
And in North Korea, over the last years and decades, they continue to teach this anti-US rhetoric that, that permeates beyond politics and it goes all the way into uh, media and the overall culture of the area. And even just a few years ago, in Golden, Colorado, you had students and teachers and parents lining the streets to protest the changes of the Advanced Placement US History course. In other words, education is an incredibly powerful tool. And I think leaders throughout history have known this really very well. But as educators, I think sometimes we forget this. I mean, are we really teaching as though we were the stewards of the most influential power on earth? What if we did? I think as educators, we just get a bit distracted sometimes. We get caught up on competition. We think, how is my country rating against other countries in science and math scores or in literacy scores? And we talk about, is this test valid or not? And should we be using that to determine if this kid is as smart as this kid somewhere across the world? And if we're not talking about comparisons, well, then we often get caught up in the idea of how we should teach. We argue about standards and what people should know at a certain stage in their life. And we talk about ways in which we can measure that over time. And we try to determine exactly what a kid should know, how they should know it, and how we're going to know if they already know it. Now, I have no argument with discussing pedagogy. In fact, I actually really like it. Because I believe it's important for us to continually evaluate the way in which we instruct so that we can make sure we have inspiring lessons every single day. And that the learning that goes on is really incredible. But a while back, I was introduced to Simon Sinek's model of the golden circle. And it struck me that as an educational society, maybe we're not putting as much emphasis on the why we teach as we should. So what if we shifted our focus? What if we went from standards and tests and growth measurements and comparisons across countries to the empowerment of individuals to discover their role in society? As Walt Whitman says in his poem, Oh Me, Oh Life, he says, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. Are the people that are walking through our classrooms each day discovering their voice and understanding the verse that they have to contribute to this powerful play? In the 2016 United States presidential election, 46.9% of eligible voters chose not to cast their vote. They had been convinced that their voice simply didn't matter. Now, to me, that's indicative of an educational system that was really focused on what people should know and talked a lot about how they should know it, but forgot to emphasize why. Because your voice is important. And we should have been focusing on that the whole time. So as educators, our role is to help people understand how they can utilize their voice and how they can contribute their verse to this entire world, this global society. And I don't just mean so they can be competitive in a 21st century world. I mean so that people can learn to think critically and truly evaluate their actions and the impact those actions have not only on themselves, but on others and the health of our planet. And there is no greater time for educators to refocus than now. I mean, human-induced climate change is a serious, serious issue, and one that threatens the health of all living, thing on this, all living things on this planet. It is time for us to recognize this problem as it truly is, the greatest attack on our well-being, the issue of our time. So let's take a lesson from our history. Because in 1942 and 1943 in the US, the war effort saw no bounds. Yeah? Everyone, whether it was a politician or if they were in the media or if they were uh, in the workforce, if they were a business person or if they were educators, every single person was taught to contribute to the war effort in the simplest of decisions. I mean, people were told to recycle more and to grow their own gardens and to be less wasteful. Everybody bought onto this, yeah? And there was no problem considering it. Nobody even questioned why they should be doing this. This is the type of education that is centered on why people should do it. And that is what made that war effort come to its positive outcome, that it did. In other words, it wasn't focused on competing. It wasn't focused on teaching people how they can be competitive against someone else across a country. Rather, it taught people that every single decision they made was important. So, my fellow educators, it's time for us to take the lead on this huge issue affecting our world and use the power which we have to affect positive change. I mean, we really do have the most influential power that we can use for positive change in the world. 
So let's act like it. Let's remember that in every single opportunity we get to teach, we are there so that we can create really incredible individuals who are innovative and responsible caretakers of our planet. More so, let's teach everybody that they can make decisions that are life-changing for the long-term sustainability of our planet. So, I've refocused my questions now when people come to ask me for advice. Of course, I still ask them, you know, what do you like and what makes you angry? But now I have a new question. How are you going to be a positive contributor to the sustainability and health of our planet? I mean, what if we all did something that simple? Thank you. <laughs>